Welcome to the Attic of Orphan Pictures. I'm your host, Philip Mershon. The world gone mad, AKA the public be damned. No, I'm not reading you the latest headlines off the wire services. I'm telling you the two different titles that today's orphan picture was released under. And just why had the world gone mad? Well, this pre-coder was distributed by Majestic Pictures in 1933. And to quote Ginger Rogers from Gold Diggers of 1933, the depression, dearie. Then as now, what aids the lead up to and the successful run of a depression or a recession better than law-breaking corporate greed propped up with underworld muscle who can knock off anybody for you that may be getting too close to your truth? It seems as though pyramid and Ponzi schemes were as popular back then as they have been in recent years. Think Enron, Bernie Madoff, or Herbalife for that matter. So you've got the corporate evildoers and the mob on one side, and you've got the newly named DA and his best buddy and roommate, an investigative reporter on the other side. Ah, but wait, the plot thickens. The young DA is the fiance of the head of bad corporate's daughter. I think it's safe to say that things are going to get a lot worse before they get better. This is a very interesting picture with a top-notch lineup of the most talented people, mostly culled from the silent era. One notable talkies only performer is the exception. For the underhanded underworld types, we have the terrific triumvirate of Louis Calhern, Evelyn Brent, and J. Carol Nash. The characters of Gaines and Osborne are the stock manipulators that built the shaky pyramid that Cromwell Investments Corporation sits atop of. And now Cromwell may in fact have been kept out of the loop as to the shady dealings, but his delight with all the newfound money made sure that his eyes stayed blind and he's as complicit as the rest. Cromwell is played by the veteran Poverty Row actor John St. Polis, who I always think of as that guy with the beady eyes and the tiny mouth. Beautiful Mary Bryan plays the daughter. She got her start in the 1924 Paramount silent picture of Peter Pan as Wendy Darling. And finally, our two good guy heroes are District Attorney Lionel Houston, played by Neil Hamilton, who, for my money, will always be remembered as Commissioner Gordon from Batman and the wise-cracking reporter Andy Terrell, played by Pat O'Brien. The wise-cracking anybody, but especially the wise-cracking reporter, was O'Brien's stock and trade. And here's the lookout. Two really swell scenes to thank director Christy, Christy Cabanet for. The first is in the beginning when Gaines orders a hit from Bruno the mob guy on the sitting DA, and there's a series of phone calls subcontracting the hit out each time for a lower rate so that many people wind up getting a piece of the assassination pie. And then late in the picture, where earning its pre-code credentials, Evelyn Brent and Pat O'Brien are both pretending to be drunk, each for their own reasons, while on a bed in the dark with very suggestive dialogue. And this goes on for about two minutes and it sounds like they're having an absolute blast doing it. I'll be back after the picture to talk a little bit more about Evelyn Bren, but until then, have a look at The World Gone Mad.
Only the bottles ain't, uh, I mean, aren't quite so fancy. There is paragraph. Our local spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine spaghetti in bottles, Miss Sarconi? It's better than the stuff we've been getting from that other outfit. Come on. So the deal is off. Period. Yeah? Oh, Graham Gaines, eh? Show him in. Hello. How are you? All right, Bruno. <laughs> now, I'm just going to have a little slip there. Will you join me? Don't mind if I do. How's business? Oh, not so hot, no? I got in a thousand cases of champagne. A1 stuff, too. Can't move it. Competition? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Depression. Mm. I had to close three of my own speakeasies last month. Can you imagine that? Mm. How are you with the district attorney? Oh, all right. His men raid my joints once in a while, and I open up again, but that's his job, so why squawk? That's too bad. Oh, it's too bad. Oh, I thought you and the DA might be fighting. Do you want us to fight? Well, I could make it worth your while. Fight to the finish? To the finish. Oh. Well, that's a risky job. But it could be done. Mm -hmm. Be pretty expensive. For instance, by the time I split down the line for a job like that, I'd be taking the short end. I don't know, say, uh, 20 grand? Yeah, I guess I could handle it for that. Now, isn't that strange? That happens to be just the amount I have in my pocket. <laughs> No, ain't that odd. <laughs> Excuse me a minute, will you? Got a little business in my private office. Sure, Bruno, it's okay for 10 grand. Yeah, Mac. For five G's, it's in the bag. Two grand's a price, Mac. Yeah. All right. For $1,000, he is done, my friend. Why hold out on me? You break that story tomorrow, and the afternoon papers will scoop me like a white winged shovel. Oh, that's the way with these reporters. Give them an inch and they'll steal the yardstick. Yeah, and that's the way with you district attorneys. You get a fellow work up to a certain point, and you back out just like a dame. Well, they'd tell you if he could, Andy. Yeah, sure. Listen, pal, he's a clam and you're his first cousin. Have you told the trust of deputy of yours? No. Oh, then you watch this? No. My worthy roommate, I apologize. Daddy, can't I please play with my train? Why, sure you can, Ralph. Oh, goody, goody. The only to do is turn this little gadget, and away she goes. Stop it, Daddy, stop it. I want to run it. All right, Sonny Buck, all right. Here we are. Now, wait a minute. There you are. You know, if I don't get on the front page pretty soon, I'm going to fall right out of my pants. Break down. Give me a lead, will you? I think I've uncovered another investment looting. Another one? Who's going to take the rap this time? The public, as usual. Mm. Come on, spill it. What famous high binders are getting away with what company's bankroll? Aside from the men involved, just two men know that, Andy. Myself and the examiner, whom they bribe, has the falsified statement of the corporation's assets. Daddy. Oh, hello, Sonny. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you like your train? I want to run it. All right, boy. Come on now. Sit down right here. Now then. Ah. Now, no, 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 no. There. Gee, Daddy, it's 
my train. Was Dad showing you how to run your train, darling? Yes, Mommy. Andy was engineer first. And I suppose Lionel was engineer second, and Papa was engineer third. Yes, Mommy. Were you watching? No, sweetheart. A little bird told me. And what was this watching? Mm-hmm. If you engineers are finished playing, dinner is ready. Best news I've had since lunch. You're going to stay, aren't you, Lionel? Well, I'll have to duck right after dinner. You see, Diane and Diane, I... Diane, Diane. I get up with Diane, have two meals a day with Diane, go to sleep. Well, skip it. Imagine a beautiful young Deb like Diane Cranwell falling for a mug like this. <laughs> Boy. Uh, uh, come on, Sally Buck. Come on. Gee, Daddy. I have your favorite dessert tonight, Andy. Yeah. I hope it's rough on wrap. Oh. <laughs> come on. Up, please. Ah, the boy. Daddy, I bet I'll flush my train when you weren't around. Is that my paper? Tell them I'm practically there. Run along. Hello. This is Avery Hamilton speaking. Who? Miss Lamont? No, I can't say I recognize the name. Oh, in connection with Mr. Kemp. I'm Harley Kemp's sweetheart, Mr. Henderson. He's told me you found out about that statement he passed for suburban utilities. Oh, you can't send him to jail, Mr. Henderson. You can't. I'm a clerk at suburban utilities in the bond department. Yes, Nina Lamont. I have evidence which proves there are others involved besides Harley. I'll give it to you if you'll just give him a chance. Oh, please, Mr. Henderson, be a good sport about it, won't you? Can I see you this evening, Miss Lamont? Well, where do you live? Yes. Second floor, apartment five. I'll be there about eight o'clock. Yes. Goodbye. And when Andy Kendall gets you, the train went around and around and around. Gee, it was well of my daddy to bring me a train. Wasn't it, Mommy? It certainly was. You and Daddy are going to have lots of fun, especially Daddy. <laughs> I'll have to hurry, dear. You don't have to go back to the office. I'm afraid I must. That call completes the chain in the corporation looting I mentioned. Me without a Get lead. A, take a crumb and be satisfied. Miss Lamont? Yes, Mr. Anderson. Come in. Oh, Mr. Henderson, you won't arrest Harley, will you? Well, that depends. You said something about papers. May I see them? If I give them to you, what about Harley? If they contain the information I want, I'll let him turn state's evidence. You're a regular guy, aren't you? Got here. Well, if he calls again, you tell him to go. Oh, Andy. I couldn't tell him that. Now, how do you spell? Yes, yeah, Susan. Yeah, I know. I know I was supposed to take you to dinner, but I got tied up. Yeah. I, I couldn't get to a telephone. What? Another girl? Who, me? Oh, no. Hey, how do you spell? Aileen Clark this afternoon. No, but somebody did. Bertha? No. Betty? No. Beatrice? Yeah, that was it, Beatrice. Okay, Beatrice never calls. I'm always in. Don't forget that, Palsy. 
Now, how do you spell Poughkeepsie? Unravel that again, will you? Poughkeepsie. Oh, Poughkeepsie. 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 Take it, Yonkers, and let it ride, will you? Jack, come on up, Chief. Come on, come on. Ready for extra. Hold it, Harry. With you in a minute. Why the hell don't you answer your phone? Avery Henderson's been murdered. Say. Here. Composing room. Gun shot. Left chest. Ah, probably. Whiskey on bread. <laughs> Smells like golden. Not bad. Well, that's all. Let's give the order of removal. Yes. Friend of yours, wasn't he, Andy? I'll say he was a friend. What time did it happen? About an hour ago, the coroner said. Who's that Airedale Nichols is talking to in the other room? The guy with the glasses? Yeah. That's Collins' janitor. He found him. How come? He said Henderson sent him out for a pint of that stuff on the table there. And when he came back with it, this is what he found. I get it. You didn't know who he was, huh? No, sir, I'm telling you. I had no idea he was a district attorney near the site entrance. As his wife was in a delicate condition. He said she'd find it easier to come and go that way. What else do you know about him? Well, nothing much. He said he was a traveling man. Showed up about once a week. Sometimes twice. What did his wife look like? I'll ask the question, Terrell. For sake, Nichols, give me a break. What did she look like? Well, she was about 24, with reddish hair. She had a temper, too. I heard him fighting two or three times, and once I thought I had to call the police. But like a lot of other people I've seen, they pulling each other's hair one minute and billing and cooling like a couple of newlyweds the next. Any red hairs around? Plenty. Did you find Henderson's briefcase? What do you know about that? I was at his house tonight when he left to come to this joint. He had his case with him. Did you see anything of a lawyer's bag around here? No, sir, but I know what you're talking about. He called it his sample case. Attorney murdered in love nest. Why, your papers, folks. District attorney murdered in love nest. Extra. Extra papers, folks. Extra. Good. Yeah. Come on, better get out that way, Evelyn. I'll take you home first. No, I'll take a taxi. It's still on you. Oh, thanks, dear. Taxi! Taxi! I wonder if she knows. No, the office tried to get her, but there wasn't any answer. Well, the kid must have taken the receiver off the hook. Yeah, I guess so. Did you ring? Yeah. She's probably getting dressed. Henderson wasn't like that, Andy. You're telling me? Somebody framed this and did a whole proof job. Oh, it's rotten. It's worse than that. I think that's how I know. Sandy and Lyle. What? Where's Avery? What's the matter? Is he hurt? Lionel. Andy, tell me. It's going to be awful tough, Evelyn. Is he dead? How did it happen? Tell me. Oh, tell me. It's here, Evelyn. Andy and I want you to know that we don't believe it. It's a lie. You know, I was more than grateful to announce Suburban's regular dividend. It's something to do these days. Rather. Yes, our quarterly statement showed a very satisfactory condition. Unusual, I'd say. No more tonight, thanks. I thought I had a good financial mind. But since you boys have taken hold of it, well, I'm not so good. Well, I wouldn't say that. Why, you've forgotten more about finance than we'll know for a long time. 
That's all right, boys. An old horse can pull the cart, but it moves slowly. <laughs> Big problem. Boston is calling Mr. Cromwell. I'll take it in the library. Excuse me, boy. What's the matter with you? Oh, just one of those days. I feel shaky, uh, uncomfortable. Now's no time to get a case of nerves. I'm a thief, and, and I don't like the feeling. <laughs> oh, quit singing the blues. Here. There's nothing to worry about. But if that probe of suburban utilities had gone through, we'd have had plenty. But it didn't go through. There'll be another district attorney. Well, that's something to worry about later. Too much to hope for that he'll have a gun shooting, mistress. Oh, anything might happen to a man who holds that office. Are you sure this fellow Kemp is safe? Now, oh, there you go, worrying about Kemp again. If he talks... He's absolutely under control. Henderson was the only other person who knew, and thanks to a stroke of, well, we might say, fate, he's out of the picture. I can't get it out of my mind, Gaines. We're crooks. <laughs> you talk as if you're just finding that out. If Suburban's true condition ever comes out, the Cromwell Investment Corporation and every subsidiary it controls will collapse. Our investors... You're thinking of your own skin and the years you'll spend in prison if it does blow up. I'm thinking about the public, too. The thousands of people... Oh, the public be damned! If you must worry, worry about yourself. Hey, Al, this machine is crooked. You're telling me. Keep the rest for that case of gin. I'll count them. <laughs> hey, hey, slow down. You're going through a village. What happened? Collins went out today. Oh, so Collins went out today. Well, where'd he go and who'd he see? He wasn't in the janitor's clothes. He was all dressed up. Drove away from the apartment in the car. You get his license number? Gee, I forgot. And you want to be my assistant. Well, go on. You went to the Golden Peacock. Did you go in? No, I waited until I came out. Who came out? Collins and a foreign-looking fella. Tall or short? Tall. That's Chris Bruno. What else? Well, I lost him in the traffic. But I waited all day till they came back with another foreigner. Tall or short? Sure. Fancy clothes? Yes. Bats? Yes. Clubs? Yes. Walk with a limp? Yes. You're a liar, he didn't. Well, maybe he didn't limp. Then what? They came out in about an hour. Who came out? Uh, Collins and the short guy. Did you trail him? Yes. But you lost him at traffic. No. But you saw where they went? Yes. Well, no, I don't know where they go. Collins left the short guy at this address. Anything. I got a job for you. All right, be with you in a minute. Oh, hey, what the? Flags can't hurt you, sweetheart. Oh, no. Say, who's your friend? The forgotten man. Yeah? Looks as though he's been shot. If I hadn't made what he's gotten him, I wouldn't be here. Where'd you be? Well, not where you think. You see this? Looks like the bullet. Amazing, Watson. Amazing. You know what this is I got here? A uh, police microphotograph of a bullet. Right again, Watson, right again. I'll tell you what I want you to do. All crowning aside, Buck. Make me a photographic enlargement of this bullet to that size so I can compare them. Okay, what's the big idea? Learning how to be a detective in ten easy lessons. Meaning it's none of my business? How about the forgotten man? Forget him! Good evening, Mason. Good evening, sir. Did Father leave? No, Miss Cromwell. He and the gentleman are still in the living room. Oh, thank you. Come on, dear. All right. Be a very good policy to follow. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. No, come in. Lionel, you remember Mr. Osborne and Mr. Gaines, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. Glad to see you again, Hugh. You ought to remember me. I trimmed you in the TAC tournament. 
That's right, you did. Well, I'll have to take you on again one of these days. Anytime you say. Yes, oh, Dad, we have the most wonderful news. Yes? Tell them, Lionel. Well, you say. Oh, I... now, don't be so modest. With a shy embarrassment that won the instant admiration of his spellbound listeners, our new district attorney. <clears throat> My boy, congratulations. Splendid, Houston. I'm glad to hear it. Congratulations. When? The governor's appointment arrived tonight. Mm. Oh, I'm so proud. Mm. So am I. Oh, by the way, uh, Lionel, any further developments in the Henderson affair? Unfortunately, no. Oh, that was a shame. One of the rottenest things in the city's history. Yes, it certainly looked like Henderson was pulling the wool over this town's eyes. Oh, I didn't mean that. It was a cut and dried case, according to police reports. Well, what the police think and what I think are two entirely different matters. Boys, boys. Oh, I'm sorry, old man. I, I didn't know you felt that way about it. Avery Henderson was an old and dear friend of mine. He was on the level with himself, his family, and his office. You're in a better position to judge that than I am, of course. Somebody wanted him out of the way because he was in the way. Somebody paid to have that job done. Come now, in a play, my boy, but not in real mm -hmm. life. Yes, it does seem a bit, well, fantastic. Fantastic? On the very night of Avery Henderson's death, he told me that he was on the verge of uncovering one of the most gigantic corporation lootings in this city's history. Well, wouldn't those men have paid to avoid exposure? Have you any idea who those men are, Lyle? No. No, but I'm going to find out. The public looks to the law for protection from these leeches who've chiseled and gouged and swindled them out of their hard-earned dollars and given them nothing but death and misery in return. If I had my way, I'd line them all up against a wall and shoot them. But as long as the law doesn't permit that, I can at least send them away for as long as the law does permit. That's what Avery Henderson meant to do, and that's what I'm going to do. my friend. Yeah. With a capital sewer. <laughs> you and the all the time you make me laugh. Maybe you won't think I'm so funny when you find out why I'm here. Ah, and this is not friendly visit, Andy? Oh, I hope to tell you, but it's going to cost you a lot of jack. Oh, you wish to borrow money, eh? Wrong again. You're going to give it to me. For what, my friend? For a hot tip, my friend. And what is this tip? Remember I told you I was saving up to buy a chicken farm? It's going to cost me a grand. Oh, that is a whole lot of money. Wouldn't it be worth a grand to save your neck from a six-inch stretch? What do you mean by that? Now listen. You let me have some dough one time when I was in a tough spot, see? And I'm not forgetting it. I just came from police headquarters and the bullet that knocked off our late lamented DA was fired from your gun. Oh, don't get excited. DA had it coming to him. All I'm asking for is a grand. A measly grand to help you skip town. I did not kill Anderson. I have a very good alibi. I'm trying to give you a break. If you don't take it on the lamb, you're going to find yourself in a hell of an embarrassing spot, I'm telling you. I did not kill Anderson, understand? I didn't say you did, but the police think so. There's about a thousand dicks looking for you right now. Is this on the level, Andy? Did you me double-crossing anybody? Very well, my friend. Believe you. Okay, how about my grand? I give them to you. What if this is a double across? No, there's no double across. I got a closed car in the alley, and as you say in Spigotty, let's vamoose. First time I call. You keep filling around, and something will happen to your neck. Hello. No? Very well, I call again. All right, come on, Andy, we go. DA, respect the dignity of my office, will you? That's what I'm doing. Well, I see the police are still trying to search the red-headed femme. Well, they seem pretty well sold on the idea. Yeah, can you imagine? Well, the thought of that frame-up certainly thought of everything. Practically airtight. Even to a lot of phony fingerprints. Say, uh, what's the penalty for kidnapping? 
That's life, isn't it? Well, what do you think? Approximately. Let's see. I'm 34. 9934. Let's see. 9, 4 is 13. 1 to carry. 9, 3 is 12. And 1 is 13. 13. 13. Good Lord, today is the 13th. What are you mumbling about? If I had the wings. Mr. Houston's 47th assistant deputy speaking. Mrs. Henderson here. Oh, oh, yes, sure. Send her right in. Evelyn. Hello, Andy. Hello, Evelyn. How are you, Evelyn? All right, Lionel, thank you. Won't you sit down, dear? No, thanks. I can only stay a moment. How's Ralph? Oh, he went back to school yesterday. I heard Avery speak of a Mr. Kemp in connection with something on which he was working. Uh, Mr. Kemp's name is on this piece of paper. I thought it might be important. Thank you, Evelyn. There aren't any new developments about... Not yet. But there will be. We'll clear it up. I'll say we will. I hope you do. Soon. That guy must have a money stretcher. Spending 34,600 bucks on a $4,800 income is something I couldn't do myself. And I'm pretty good that way. Well, I wonder if this is what Avery was talking about. It smells like it. Suburban Utilities is one of Cromwell's, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, uh, subsidiaries? Yeah, that's right. They organized it about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And if it's sour, Cromwell's in bed, isn't he? Yes. Anything that you see or hear in this office is confidential, understand? By any chance, you're not thinking of holding out on that dear public just because your girl's father seems to be involved. This is no proof that anything's wrong. You're in a tough spot. Oh. Get Conrad on the wire, will you? Who's Conrad? One of our new investigators. Hello. Oh, yes, Conrad. Uh, say, have Harley Kemp in my office in the morning, will you? I want to talk to him. No, 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 no. Just make it casual. Yeah, thanks. If there's anything to this hunch, and you played it right, you could collect a bankroll. Yes. Uh, what? Oh, nothing. Just skip it. How do you do, Mr. Cromwell? Glad to see you, Lionel. Sit down. Thank you. You caught me just in time. Gaines and I are slipping away for golf. Well, then I'll take as little of your time as possible. No, nah, no, nah, I didn't mean that. Come along with us. No, not today, thank you. Oh, hello, Mr. Houston. Well, hello, Mr. Gaines. How are you? Fine. Uh, join us. We'll get Osborne and make it a force. Do. Glad to have you. Some other time, thanks. Well, what can we do for you? Well, I stumbled into something which I think you gentlemen should know about. What's that? You know Harley Kemp? Kemp, Kemp. Oh, uh, he was the examiner on Suburban Statement last month. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So what about him? Well, have a look at this, will you? Oh, what is it? A memo found in Avery Henderson's paper. It appears to be a list of personal expenditures. That's what it is. It means there was a doubt in Henderson's mind as to the accuracy of Suburban's last statement. A ridiculous. Preposterous. Well, Suburban's one of our strongest no. companies. I don't doubt that. <laughs> but Kemp was under suspicion, and this makes it necessary for me to question him, which I'm doing tomorrow. And the state examiners undoubtedly will ask for a recheck. Immediately. As they most logically should, of course. Have Bledsoe, Homer, and Creel come in at once. I'll instruct our auditors to lend every possible assistance. That's right, Gaines. Suburban's books will be available tomorrow. Thank you. It's too bad to place a doubt in the minds of our investors in these troubled times. Well, thank God our assets are sound. <laughs> the best in the country. Why, we could pay 100% this minute. 
Gentlemen, this is Mr. Houston, the district attorney. How are you doing, Gentlemen. Mr. Houston? A question has arisen in connection with Suburban's last statement. You will cooperate with Mr. Houston to the fullest extent in establishing the fact that that doubt is without foundation. That's all. You make it very easy for me. With a clear conscience, my boy, I'm glad to say that I can. Goodbye. Goodbye. So long, Mr. Houston. Goodbye, Mr. Haines. See you again. Right. I'll be with you in 15 minutes. on this phone. Oh, hello. You know that little deal you fixed up for me a few days ago? Uh -huh. Well, I want another one, just like it. Oh, the fellow that got the job ain't so hot, eh? Well, that's too bad. Sure, you're right about that. I can have the boys see him any time you say. Tonight? That's all right. Uh, by the way, did you see those pictures in the paper this morning? No, 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 not that one. The one where the truck crashed into the car. Horrible, wasn't it? Those jip racketeers won't stop at anything. Yeah. They are a lot of careless drivers. Hey, when you come up tomorrow, bring those steel engravings, will you? I'll take 30 this time. No, 30. Goodbye. Give me the private line. We love each other. How long will it last? You are like a burning flame to me. Will you always be the same? Hi, Chris. Hello, Andy. How's the exporting and importing oh, business? Fine. Help yourself. I did. <laughs> Meet Miss Kazmarek. Miss Fenora, you know the boy. Oh, yeah, girls. You still got the same phone numbers? West 4271. North 3155. Sounds like a bridge game. But I got them. Hey, I'll buy that book from you. You want the bicycle, too? Sell the work of a lifetime, can you imagine? She's not in the book. She's mine. Oh, private property. No trespassing. I get it. Carmela, meet Andy Terrell. You watch your English or he'll print you in that scandal sheet of his. You don't mind if I dance to you, Chris? I didn't think you would. Come on, brown eyes. I got something to tell you, baby. I can say yes or no right where we are. The proposition comes later. I got a message for you from the state. Raymond? Sure, Raymond. Where is he? Why didn't he phone me today? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Come on, let's get out of here. OK, baby. Cyclone. You said something about Raymond. Lady, you make me forget everything, even my mo- Yes, but what about Raymond? We took it on the land, which is a swell reason for you and me to get better acquainted. Left now, huh? Sure, the cops wanted to question him about the sudden and unexpected death of the DA. And because the speak did me a favor once, I tipped them off. He told me not to mention his name to you in front of Chris. It's all Greek to me. Oh, and I thought I was speaking English. I don't understand it. Do you understand this? You know, I like you, Cyclone. Oh, I don't know what it is, baby, but I certainly have got that something. Oh, is that your number? No, Angel. My number is South, 8665. I'm dated up with Chris tonight. Damn, that heel. Give me those shoes, will you, Cyclone? Sure, baby.
Hey, what's coming off here? The lady's heel. Oh, don't be like that, Chris. I just came in to use the phone. Yeah? Well, fix your necktie. Don't try two-timing me, sweetheart. You do love me, don't you, Chris? You're damn right I do. Then pull in your horn. Hello, Susie. Give me the desk. Okay, baby, I'll wait. See you later, Chris. Oh, you got a call from me? Find out who it is. Who's calling, please? Will you repeat it, please? It sounds just like you're saying Olsen. That's what I'm saying. Olsen. Sure, Olsen from the old failure's home. Well, just a minute, Mr. Olsen. I'll see if Mrs. Carroll is in. Yeah? Olsen of the old sailor's home. I don't be more. Oh, Mr. Olsen. Well, this isn't Olsen. This is Cohn. You should tell him for me. He's awfully mad, Andy. He says he's going to sue you. Well, tell him to sue in one hand and think in the other and see which gets full clicking. Uh-uh, here we are. Mm -hmm. There's the Queen's crown. And here's the king's leg. Yeah. There. Uh oh, and here's a piece I've been looking for for hours. Goodness, two o'clock. Oh. Uh -huh. oh, now we'll be hours putting it together again. Not tonight, Doc. You're going home. Oh. I wonder what the devil is keeping that guy. It must be a dame. What time is it? Who cares? Good night. Good night, dear. Let's go. You mix them. I mix them, you'll fix them. <laughs> Sometimes you're very funny. All right, Alpha Gamma, run along and buy your spinach. You want spinach? I get them. You know, if Alpha Beta Gamma had another brain, he'd be half with it. If that car of yours had been a cow, we'd have hamburgers. <laughs> Go on. Anybody could have an automobile accident? And you're the district attorney. Hmm? Say, so let me tell you something. 
You've cut the turtle races, you've amputated seven chip rackets, you've gassed a bookie joint, you've performed a cesarean operation on two fly-by-night investment corporations, you sent three gangsters up for soda operations, and I think you're on the spot. Go on. Okay, baby. There, Diogenes, take your gun. Oh, well, if it'll make you any happier. Smith and Weston make all men equal. And equality is the basis for all true democracy. Oh, and speaking of democracy, I'm giving Alpha Beta Gamma a night off. And you keep away from the joint, too. I'm showing a friend my stamp collection. I'll get it. All right. Yeah? Who? Oh, all right. Conrad. Oh. What he wants? Thanks. Hello. Yeah. What? When? Oh. Murder, suicide, or childbirth? Suicide. Holly Kemp just blew his brains out. That's the guy who went a quiz in that suburban state, isn't he? Yeah. All tied together, doesn't it? Meaning what? Anderson knew about suburban, he's dead, isn't he? Kent knew about suburban, he's dead. One and one make two, and he'll make three. They're after you. I'm talking like an idiot. And you're acting like one. Those two guys were rubbed out because they knew too much. Have you said anything about that outfit? Yes, I did, to Cromwell. Anybody else? Well, Gaines was there. Oh, we're talking like a couple of imbeciles. All right, have it your way, Solomon. Alpha Teller. He sent him for spinach. Yes, and he went for spinach. Well, he'll eat it. Dear. My boy, you should have let us know. This was nothing to worry about. When I saw in the paper, you'd been in a smash-up. Love conquers all. Will you join me in a cup of jam, Mr. Cromwell? Mm. Oh, die! if you love him, keep him off the streets after dark. What does he mean by that? Oh, don't pay any attention to him, darling. He's always like that until he's had his coffee. Oh, it's good to see you. Dorkinson. Regards from all the little Dorkinson. Mm. What's the matter? Has Daddy come feather my neck listening in? Yes. The gown was cut too low in the front. Oh, the gown was cut too low in front. Mm. Fancy that. Hey, listen, if I'm going to be a dressmaker, how about a fitting, baby? Well, of course, if you insist on a fitting, I suppose it can be arranged. At your home? Yes, I believe that would be more convenient. And ripe with possibilities, if I do say so myself. What do you want? I'll scare NJ. Oh, yes, the lighter color would be more effective. Okay, NJ. My yellow limousine will pick you up at seven bells, and you better be on time, baby. Those taxi meters haven't recognized the pressure. I'll be fitting you. Girl. Oh, you mean that girl. Now, don't breathe it to a soul, and I'll tip you off to something. That was special agent number five on case 23. <whistles> okay, America. Okay, America. I don't believe it. A registered special, Mr. Houston, delivered to addressee only. Well, it must be important. <clears throat> Sign here, please. Hmm? Hello? Right.
imagine what's keeping you alive. We're half an hour late right now. He'll be along, sweetheart. District attorneys don't punch time clocks. Good evening, Mr. Houston. Good evening, Mason. Uh, never mind, I'm not staying. Oh, there he is now. Well, Lionel, you're not dressed. We're supposed to go to the Green Wall Dinner. Darling, something of the utmost importance has come up. I must talk with your father. Why, of course. Dad? Yes? Mama wants to see you. I'll phone him we can't make it. Thank you, darling. Then after you talk to Dad, we'll hurry up. Good evening, Lyle. Good evening. Oh, well, what's this? Aren't you going? Oh, no. I'd like to talk with you. Certainly, my boy. I'll phone. Thank you. Greenwalds will be disappointed. Yes. Uh, sit down, my boy. Have a cigar? No, thank you. What's on your mind? An hour ago, I received a letter from a dead man. Dead man? Harley Kemp. Oh, speak up. What is it? The letter concerns you. Me? The Cromwell and Corporation. In what way? You don't know? What the devil are you driving at? Kemp's letter accused you. Accuses me? Of what? This is no time to hide behind evasions. Then don't you. Kemp's confession says that your company has been systematically looted for the past two years. It's a damn lot. I suspected that Harley Kemp confessed it. You accuse me of robbing my own company? You signed papers, okay reports, past statements. Could the condition have existed unless you were a party to it? Why, I... Oh, you're crazy. The truth now would make it a great deal easier for both of us. You? The investigation will take a day to get underway. You have 24 hours in which to cover the shortage. Not that I'm trying to save you, I'm not. But I'm thinking of the people that you fleeced and robbed, the thousands who lose everything, every penny they have in the world. Get out of my house. Get out! Why, Dad? Lionel! This idiot accuses me of being a thief. He has the nerve to stand there and tell me that I've robbed my own company. Lionel, are you mad? It's the truth. You accuse my father of being a thief. This is a copy of the letter which proves it. You take that man's word against my father. Well, how was I to... Please leave. Oh, Dad. Never mind, sweetheart. If he's that big a fool, you don't want him. No. No. Hello? Anderson, let me speak to Mr. Gaines. How soon do you expect him? Well, tell him I want to see him, at my home, as soon as he comes in. Yes, this is Mr. Cromwell. And tell him it's very important. Very good, sir. I'll tell Mr. Gaines. <laughs> you need a haircut, Cyclone. Sure. I'm saving up to get one just for you, baby. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, give me that snipe. Me when I do a set, I'll join on fire. Hey. Okay, baby. Okay. How long you been working with a speck? What you want to know for? Mm, I don't know. I just thought if he had a first mortgage on you, I didn't want to chisel in. <laughs> I must you don't. <laughs> Whoopee! Calm down, will you, Angel? I want to sing. What are you trying to do? Compromise me? Oh, you're cute, Cyclone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the half of us. <laughs> that a threat or a promise? That's a promise, brown eyes. And a tail worded as good as a tail bond. 
Wouldn't it be funny if Raymond walks in here now? Yeah. I'm laughing at myself to death. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't I'm gonna die ticklish. So you gonna quit? All right, I tell him. Say, uh, what would you do if this pig was stepping out on you? I'd go boom, 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 and somebody fall down. No, I don't want to set any funerals, but he's your two time on your baby. Is that right? With a redhead, too. Is that right? Mm, that's right. Is that right? I wouldn't kid you, that's right. Who is she, Cyclone? No, I don't know. I thought maybe you knew. Well, how should I know? You sort of helped us pick out on that job, didn't you? What job? Oh, you know. <laughs> sure, I know. <laughs> you sure pulled a nate. What? 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 No, you need another drink, baby. She was his girl, but she done him wrong. Hey, gag yourself on that one. Oh, I wish Raymond was here. Oh, now, wasn't that nice? Oh, you know what I mean. This is different. Oh, yeah. I bet you I know what time it is. We got plenty of time, baby. I bet you it's 8.30. Say three, two and a quarter. Courtesy of the Serial Talk of West Company. Sure is a shame the way Bruno takes advantage of the spank. You and he take all the chances, and Bruno gets all the dough. Oh, I don't know. You don't know what, Brown Eyes. Yes, that's right. Well, didn't you? Hey, you talked to Slayer Copper. Oh, am I insulted? What do you want to ask so many questions for? Well, I don't know. I just got a large bump of curiosity. But curiosity killed a cat. Hmm. <laughs> but look at all the fun those cats have. Not seven different kinds of a sap. Fifty-seven. You're not mad at me, are you, sucker? Oh, no. Come home at once, daughter. All is forgiven. You're complete. Hello, Chris. How are you, Daryl? Well, I'm not so good. I got kind of a funny feeling here in my stomach. Oh, we'll pick that up for you. What does he know? Plenty. Oh, it's too bad. Andy, I always sort of liked you. Where's Houston? I don't know. Well, telephone Cromwell's house, and if he's there, you tell him you're sick. And make him believe it. Sure, and get him put on the spot. Nuts to you. Chris. Don't be a fool, Terrell. Well, I'm that already. Why make a heel out of me? Well, it'll work out just the same. All we gotta do is wait. He'll show. Okay, Raymond. Andy? I no like to do this. Oh, all right, I'll phone. Houston is not here. 
Well, now what? Call his office, the private wire. We got time. We can wait. Smart girl. Hey, Chris. Yeah? Did you ever read the Decameron? No, who wrote it? One of the Spigs' ancestors. <laughs> and the old time you make funny crack. <laughs> wait a minute. Don't answer that. Well, maybe it's Houston. Let it ring. until you do get it. Me. I'm home. I don't know. I'm, I'm sick as a fool. Yeah, I've got a... No, on the level, I'm not drunk. I'm sick. I came home about 6.30 and I went right to bed with the hot water bottle. The devil you're talking about. You're in some speakeasy drunk. I'm home, I tell you. And I'm sick. Tell him to call you back and see. If you don't believe me, call me back. Satisfied. Why don't you go to sleep? No, honest. I'm so weak, I'm about to pass out. I can hardly hold a phone. Oh, well, all right. Hello. Oh, Mr. Houston. Yes, he's home. I just talked to him. Oh, but Mr. Houston, he isn't at home. Because I've been ringing there every few minutes for, well, nearly half an hour. Good evening, Mr. King. Mr. Cromwell is in the library. What's happened? Then it's true. How bad is it? Beyond hope of saving. There's nothing left. Nothing of any value. But our stocks. Our securities, millions. I... I don't understand. Then I'll tell you. They're gone. Exchanged for securities that aren't worth the paper they're printed on. Why did you do it? Have you ever heard of pyramiding? Well... That's what I was doing. That's what everybody else was doing. Trying to make $10 out of one. 
It was easy to start, impossible to stop. But our investors... Oh, damn our investors! I'm worrying about myself. This means indictments for me, for you. Your signature's behind everything I've done. Why, I... I... I can't think. I don't want to go to prison. Well, neither do I. There's a way out for both of us. Over a million dollars in gold arrived today. That foreign shipment. Are you certain? I signed for it. We can get it tonight. Leave the country on your yacht. Well, that's good sense. Come on. Well, I must leave a note for Diane. Now, hurry up. I'll get your hat and coat. Oh, Mason. Yes, sir. Get Mr. Cromwell's hat and coat. Hurry. Very good, sir. left some time ago.
what's it all about, Bruno? A little surprise party. You're riding tonight here. I'll brace you boys up. Untie him. Come on, hurry up. All right, get going. Drop that gun, Salvador. Raymond! 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 Why, you dirty dumping... Uh, what's the answer? The gentleman on the floor is Salvador, the spig. He killed Henderson. And the soft-hearted little brunette, that's the redhead gal who helped frame Avery. And Bruno here, the man who learned about women from her, he's the guy who took dope from somebody higher up. Say, Nichols. Don't forget to pick up Collins, that janitor. Nice work, Nichols. Take him in. Hello? Hello, Evelyn. Listen, I'm dropping up a headline for the morning edition. Yeah, I want to read it to you if you're okay. All set? Avery Henderson exonerated. District Attorney, victim of frame-up. Oh, there's lots more to it, but that's all you want to know. Oh, Andy. I... I... Mommy. What you crying for? Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> Come on, Abe, step on those pants, will you? How can I step on the pants when I'm dressing him? Come on, come on, I got a date with the bride and groom. You're chasing a bride, and you're chasing a broom. And I've been chasing you, Mr. Andy Terrell, and I want my ten Oh, No, Abe, I'm in a hurry. Quit yelling like a stuck pig. Tea? Fui. You don't pay me. Now you help me. If I don't get the money, I keep the pen. Oh! You keep the pen. It's so interesting that censorship being a thing of the past on streaming TV these days and all manner of sex and profanity is the norm, I was still surprised and a little shocked to hear the liberal sprinkling of hells and dams in this picture. But I wanted to give a brief shout out to my favorite in this picture, or any picture that she's in for that matter, Evelyn Brent. Talk about having it. I can't look at anyone else when she's on the screen. Brent was a huge star in the late silent era. I've actually read that she was referred to as the Betty Davis of the silent era. And before Marlena Dietrich came along, she was Joseph von Sternberg's favorite actress. He directed her to spectacular acclaim as Feathers, the gangster mall in the 1927 silent masterpiece Underworld the film that really started Hollywood's fascination with gangsters. 
It was also the role that would cement Evelyn as the go-to gangster mall or gangster lady in picture after picture after picture. Really, no one was better at bad than Brent. And an extraordinary thing happened. Her, her star crested and by the early talky era, she wound up like we saw her today, smaller roles in Poverty Row pictures for the rest of her career. And that's not the extraordinary part. Many stars had their day in the sun to be followed by ever-diminishing returns. No, the extraordinary thing is that losing her star status and the Cadillacs and the townhouse and the beach house and becoming a working film and vaudeville touring actor who had a modest apartment seemed to suit her just fine. She would say in interviews that being afforded the occasional splurge of a new pair of slacks made her so much happier and appreciative than having the closets full of furs and gowns that she used to have. Evelyn Brent had three husbands and two long-term female companions. She did her last acting job in 1960 on an episode of Wagon Train, and then she spent the last years of her life with her final companion, actress Dorothy Conrad in an apartment in West Hollywood, passing away at the age of 75 in 1975. Just another one of our interesting friends to be known and remembered here in the Attic of Orphan Pictures. Until next time, this is Philip Mershon thanking you for joining me and reminding you to subscribe and like and share and so long.